Hello once again, and Tony here with a review of Nightcrawler, which was shown at the Barbican Center Cinema 2. And no, I am not talking about one of the X-Men. I'm talking about this crime thriller film that starred Jake Gyllenhaal. With that said, let's get on with the review. The film was directed and written by Dan Gilroy. It was produced by Jennifer Fox, Jake Gyllenhaal, Tony Gilroy, David Lancaster, and Michelle Litvak. And it stars, well, Jake Gyllenhaal, Rene Russo, Riz Ahmed, Bill Paxton, and Michael Hyatt. Now, I didn't really have any expectations for this film after I saw the trailer, though, even though the trailer was very exciting and managed to get me into the mood of this film, I was almost expecting it to be yet another generic action thriller crime film. But Boy, was I wrong. This film managed to succeed my expectations very well. It was just excellently done, and it was just awesome all around. Now, story-wise, the film does begin with our male protagonist being a loser in life and trying to find himself a proper job that pays him very well. And one fateful night, he encounters crime scene, of course, and sees that these cameramen are handling each of the juicy and, if not, like, process of what the hell has happened, which kind of inspires him to get into being a stinger. And when he shows his footage after several failed attempts of trying to get some footage recorded in terms of a crime scene that happened, he gets accepted and with a better equipment. And from then on, he proceeds to film every crime scene, every murder scene, every arrest, and wow. It was just simply put great. And it's not only a high-octane action thriller and crime mystery thriller, so to say, but... It is also a social commentary of how far news networks will go to get bigger ratings and also the risks that stingers get from trying to get themselves into filming such material and even the questionable antics of what these stingers try to do in order to get the best out of the material that would be accepted from these news networks. And it really paints a fine line between black and white. And believe me, when film and theater are just only in black and white, it can't be that compelling. It really manages to go all gray in terms of morality, ethics, and just how far someone can go in terms of journalism and even the professional world of, well, being in the news. It really shows that very well. Now, you might think that it would be quite tough for a film to be an action thriller, a social commentary, and this and that to be mixed up, right? Well, all thanks to Mr. Jill Roy's excellent writing, and great directing, this film really shone in its story. And it was just very engaging, and it was just excellently written, and I feel like there was nothing like this. But there is also another film that did also have some social commentary, but it was also a satire. And that film was Network, and while Network manages to be a satire and social commentary, on networks wanting to get more ratings, Nightcrawler is a lot more than that. It wasn't just about news networks getting more ratings. It's also the risks that stingers face when their lives are on the line in terms of recording footage from each crime scene, each shooting, and each investigation scene. It really shows just how intelligently written this film is. And in terms of the business matters that news networks are constantly faced every day. Now, the ratings to them is like 
they're 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 key to getting a lot more success and a lot more fame and money. And when it comes to that, their supply is getting the best material that will make everyone in America tune in to their networks and tune into their news religiously. And I felt that that's what Mr. Gilroy managed to do with this film excellently. The cinematography was absolutely fantastic with a lot of sharp editing and such a high octane energy that managed to really radiate throughout the film. The cinematography done by Robert Ellswit was just excellently done. It was just so thrilling and there were moments which made me feel nervous but I really loved those moments. Those moments were really tense and really got me hooked throughout the film. It was just excellently shot and it was just a treat to watch. And the music, there is definitely a lot of moments where the music can be quite muted and can be quite eerie, which really helps the tone of the film. And it really sets the tone and it doesn't always go bombastic. In fact, it goes like more on the eerie and very like surreal side without being too surreal, but more on the eerie side. And there are moments where you just hear a certain stillness and that's pretty much it, but it helps the film. Now the characters are very interesting. Now, like I said, Lou Bloom does start off as a very awkward and very shy loser in life who really needs to find a job in order to get the Benjamins rolling. Until that one fateful night when he sees a group of cameramen getting a shot of the crime scene, which kind of inspired him to become a cameraman himself, or like I said, a stinger or a night crawler in this case. And when he shows one of the footage of a dead man to the news network, or one of the directors of the footage of the news network, who is Nina, who I'll talk about her later, he gets accepted. And what's also interesting about him is that throughout his life, he has studied a lot online, which can really show in terms of the vocabulary he uses that is just absolutely flawless and it's just absolutely unbelievable to see that well on the outside he does seem like an average Joe who's trying to find a job but my god when he gets busy and when he gets professional he really does get professional even if it's risking his own life and even if the questions between morality and ethics do come and really try to stop him. He tries not to let anything stop him. It's not just for money, but it's also because this is what he truly loves. And he was just absolutely great. I would say that this guy is turning out to be one of my favorite anti-heroes of all time. And then we have the character of Rick. Much like Lou, he does kind of start off a bit as a failure in life, working at a restaurant, getting a meager job, and getting some meager pay. That's pretty much it. Until Lou offers this opportunity for him to really shine as not just his personal GPS, but also his partner in crime. Now, yes, he does start off as awkward, and he does start off as like a bit of a liability to lose plans but throughout the film he gets better and better and better but unlike Lou well Rick is a lot more insecure he's unsure of what they're doing is right he's unsure if what they're doing is even moral or even safe because he knows for a fact that their lives are on the line in terms of this job that they get. But still, he manages to catch up quickly and he manages to be 
a great partner to Lou, though he does fuck up from time to time, but that's what makes him human. And then we have the character of Nina. Now, Nina is also quite fascinating as a character because, well, she's basically just like how we see uh, news directors in terms of how they want their ratings. And when they have someone like Lou on their side, they know that they can be a force that they can be reckoned with. However, there are moments in which she can't always trust Lou, but Lou always reassures her time and time again that he's done his homework, he's done his research, and Nina puts her trust in him. And she really has a sense of trust with Lou because after seeing the footages that were offered to him, offered by him to the news network, she already knew for a fact that she had someone like Lou to really jump on board and really, really make the best out of this risky task. And then we have the two detectives. They aren't really seen throughout the film. The one female detective who is black, so to say, who is African American, and she basically is one of the characters who does get some screen time, but even though she doesn't really have that much screen time, her presence in the film manages to be quite strong, intimidating, but also quite, well, no nonsense as well. And her name is, let me double check, ah, Detective Frontieri. And she manages to be a great character in her own way, even though she barely gets some screen time because she pretty much represents that just like the law, she is trying to be the one that holds the line between what's ethical and what's not. She really tries to stand firm on those beliefs. So, well, enough for, like rambling on the characters. They were all great, and they each have their own quirks and their own goals. And the acting was stellar all around. Jake Gyllenhaal gave such a fine and very intriguing performance as Lou. I just loved how he managed just to deliver each line very effectively, and I'm sure this performance could even land him in being an Oscar nominee. Make it happen, people. Make it happen. This is one of the most intriguing performances I have ever seen come out of Jake Gyllenhaal's resume, and it's just absolutely exciting. And not to mention, very fascinating. And there were moments where I was genuinely creeped out by him. But still, it's a very fascinating performance of such a well-rounded anti-hero. And then we have the role of Nina, who was done by Rene Russo. Now, she was absolutely great as well. She managed to play Nina's thirst for getting better ratings very effectively. And then we have Riz Ahmed as Rick. I had no idea that this actor was even British to begin with. I almost thought that he was American. And now that I knew, he really gave off such a flawless American accent. It was just unbelievable. He managed to make the role of Rick his own. He was able to play Rick's sane man nature very well. And he managed to also play his very youthful nature very, very believably. So overall, this film was excellently written, excellently acted, and I can really see it being nominated for an Oscar for Best Picture. This is very thought-provoking, very high-octane, and it kicks a whole lot of ass. So, you know what I'm going to give this film. A very well-deserved Five out of five stars. It really deserves to be called a classic, and I really hope that this film gets nominated for an Oscar. In fact, I can really see that it has some pretty tough competition for which one's going to be nominated for an Oscar. It's got Grand Budapest Hotel and many others. So I'm sure that this film 
will be nominated for an Oscar, and it's probably going to even, even be nominated for a BAFTA. Who knows? I really hope that this film can be really, can just be nominated for those those prestigious awards because it's so excellently written, so excellently executed, and if you haven't seen this film yet, go and check it out. You will not be disappointed, especially when you have such phenomenal performances from Jake Gyllenhaal and Rene Russo. It is so worth your time. Well, that's all for now. I'm quite sad to leave London once again, and sure, I was very disappointed that I didn't get into the Guildhall acting program, well, the Bachelors of Acting program, but still, there are definitely a lot of chances for me to shine. In fact, next year I'm going to be notified of my audition at Regents University, and once I get back to Berlin, I'll basically have to pay the audition fee for the Guildhall School of Music in terms of the Bachelors in Music classical tenor singing program that I plan to audition for. So once I make the payment, they'll let me know my audition date as usual. So it really shows that London is definitely a place for me to really thrive, and I really hope that I get into any of those schools once I get accepted. So until then, this is Antoni signing off, wishing you all a good night, and happy All Souls Day, everybody.